Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Math 6th in Part 5 of Module 1, and we're going to compute compound interest. Now, I actually just rewrote the tests for this so that it's going to be much less sensitive uh, than all of these decimal points. Uh, so hopefully that should help with some of the errors some of the students have been reporting. Um, but okay, let's jump into it. So for reference, um, when you click on that, you're going to go here. Compound interest, there's a ton of stuff. Uh, essentially what we want is we want the total compound interest generated as the final value minus the initial principal, which refers to this set of equations. But this is essentially our equation, so maybe we could grab this. I don't think we'll be able to, but let's just see if we can. And, uh, no, that's not particularly helpful. Um, so, something like I is equal to P times 1 plus, what do I got? Uh, R over N. And then that's raised to the, that's the whole quantity is raised to the, uh, what is it, n times t power, that would be minus p. Okay, so most of the difficulty in this problem uh, comes with trying to make sure that the order of operations is written correctly. Uh, so, let's, let's jump into it. I'm going to click variable uh, int uh, compounded interest, maybe, is equal to and what do we have? P times, let me blow this up a little bit. This is our one right here. So essentially, I think the way that this works is that you do exponents first. So we'll make this a quantity, one plus R over N, and then we'll raise that to the NT exponent. So math.power, and math.pow, let's just look it up, math.pow, MDN. We'll grab that, just to make sure that we're gonna use it right. Uh, math power returns the base to the exponent power. That is base to exponent. So if we wanted to do uh, a quantity to n times t, n times t is going to be this argument, and the quantity that we want to raise to that power is going to be there. So uh, for so we'll have two values, and we'll just put parentheses around them. So the power we want to raise it to is n times t. So n times t I think is time in years and compounding frequency, so it'll be compounding frequency times time in years, and that's the exponent that we're raising this to. And what we are raising to an exponent is something like one plus, did it say plus? Plus, and then r over n. So r over n is the interest rate divided by the compounding frequency. So already you can tell that this is one of those where um, Approaching this equation with a little bit of um, forethought can be very useful because at this point all we've done so far is this part right here. We have the quantity, 1 plus the interest rate over the compounding frequency, uh, raised to uh, the compounding frequency times time in years. And actually that's enough times for that to mess up for us to go over to Replit. Uh, no reason to mess around with the small uh, input window uh, if it starts to um, be even mildly frustrating. You can always just bring it over here. And in case you're curious why I always change that to dark, uh, I'm not really sure. It's just it's a habit, and I can't get myself to not do it, so um, I just like how it looks. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab all of this and move it over to our replit. That's a little easier to take. Not, not perfect yet, but that's okay. And so then I think what they want is they want this entire quantity that we have after being raised to the power, that's going to be multiplied uh, by P, which is our principal. So principal times, times math.pow of all of this. And these can usually, see how it highlights? These are great for highlighting your, uh, your parentheses. So it highlights this one and it tells us that that parentheses lines up with this here. And then this closes the principal times that value. So we essentially have all of this done right now. And then we need to subtract from that the principal. And then we would return compound uh, interest. And these kind of text editors are fun because we can just hit tab and it assumes that we need compound interest, compounded interest. 
Uh, it's also going to allow us to say maybe compounding frequency because that's also a variable that we've listed. Stuff like that can be very useful. I would advise uh, not relying on it too heavily, but if you find yourself with a lot of long names like this, um, that's okay uh, to, to just kind of, you know, hit tab and let it complete for you. So let's grab this. This is our little mini test case. In case you're curious, I'm hitting control tab and that lets me uh, cycle between the open tabs that I have. Uh, if you hit control shift tab, you can, you know, go the opposite direction. So variable output is equal to compute compound interest called with these arguments. And so if I console log the output, it should be something like that. Fingers crossed. And it's pretty close. Actually, that's exactly it. Excellent. So it looks like we have a working function. So I'm going to copy all of this and move back to the actual um, exercise page, paste it in and run the tests. And we're in good shape. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.